When we left off, we were talking about Alfred Wegener, and in around 1910 to 1915, he had this idea of continents drifting, and he published a book on it, and he had good evidence with, with the pieces seemed to fit together, and he matched up fossils on both sides, and he matched up landforms and mineral deposits. Um, and he, because he was trained as a meteorologist, he noticed that climates were different. Uh, there were Arctic climates in places that were now in the tropics. And so he had, he knew that the continents had drifted, but he couldn't come up with a mechanism that would make that happen. He couldn't explain how it could work. And, and therefore he struggled with gaining acceptance to his ideas. It wasn't until 30 years after he died that sonar was invented for military purposes, but it allowed people to easily map the ocean floor. And when they did that, one of the things they discovered was what looks like a zipper down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and it's right in the middle. And when they investigated that, they went down and they discovered that the rocks, as you got further away from the, uh, the ridge, as you got further away, the rocks got older. And it's pretty easy to make the jump that if these rocks are 5 million years old, probably 5 million years ago, they were here. If these rocks are both 10 million years old, 10 million years ago, they were here. So they came up with this idea of seafloor spreading, that lava flows up in the middle of the ocean, cracks the ground open, forms new crust, and now the ocean is a little bit wider. And the Atlantic Ocean is getting bigger by about this much every year. That brings another problem, though. That all kind of makes sense. And uh, I should point out it was Marie Tharp who did the maps, put all the data together that she often doesn't get credit. Um, that allowed Harry Hess to put some pieces together in his model. He said, okay, it's getting bigger in some places. It must be getting smaller in other places because the earth isn't getting any bigger overall. So he noticed that there were trenches and when they, and along those trenches, there were also lots of earthquakes. And so the idea is that in some places the ocean is getting bigger, but in some places those ocean plates, remember ocean plates are made out of that heavy, dense rock called basalt. It is being pushed under. And uh, it's not a coincidence that along these trenches, notice where that V is, that's the trench, it's deeper there that plate melts and pops up a string of volcanoes. All around the oceans, we see these strings of volcanoes and just offshore is a deep ocean trench. It's because the ocean plate is diving under, being subducted, that's the term for this. Subduction is when the plate gets pushed under, melts and pops up a string of volcanoes. Uh, Japan, Indonesia, the Caribbean islands, all of those are, are uh, the Aleutian Islands. All of those are uh, examples of that. Harry Hess proposed this in 1960. And he was just talking about the oceans mostly. But something must be going on on land too. And in 1965, a revolutionary idea was proposed and it's called the theory of plate tectonics. We don't think of it as very revolutionary now. It's pretty widely accepted because it just makes so much sense. And everything about the globe just works if you think of the Earth as functioning in this way. Tuzo Wilson is the guy credited with it. Uh, I think he's Canadian. Uh, proposed the idea in 1965 that the Earth's crust is broken into plates. It's broken into sections. And, and there's, there's ocean sections, there's continental sections. Some, some plates are a mixture of continental crust and ocean crust, but they are pushed by convection currents in the mantle. Remember the core of the earth is heated by radioactive decay and compression and uh, heat rises, the hot magma near the core is, gets hotter 
it rises because it's less dense, cools off when it's, it gives off its heat to the crust and sinks back down. And that convection current drags the plates along. That's, that's the basics of it anyway. And because of that, we have all of these situations. And, and this is a very important slide. It's the last slide. It's probably the most important slide of the chapter. There are three ways that plates can interact. They can pull apart. Diverging means the plates are pulling apart. They can be pushing together, converging. Or they could be just sliding past each other. That's the only three ways two plates can interact. They could be pulling apart, they could be pushing together, or they could just be sliding past each other. Divergent boundaries, convergent boundaries, transform boundaries. Now we also have different kinds of plates. We have continental plates and ocean plates. And so the landforms that are created depend on the direction the plates are moving and what kind of plates they are. If it is a, an ocean plate, we'll start with ocean plates. If they are ocean plates pulling apart, we get mid-ocean ridges, like that one right there. If they are ocean plates pushing together, we get ocean trenches, like that one right there. So ocean plates pull apart, we get a mid-ocean ridge. Ocean plates pushing together, we get an ocean trench and a string of volcanoes. If they are continental plates, remember continental plates are thicker, they, uh, they float higher because they're made out of that less dense rock, granite, predominantly. So because they float higher, it's never going to get pushed under. Instead, if two Oh, if two continental plates push together, they don't push down, they push up, and we get mountains. So two continental plates, neither one wants to take a dive, so instead of going down, they go up. Two continental plates pulling apart gives us a rift valley. So if two continental plates are pulling apart, we get something like that, a rift valley. Transform boundaries don't really create new landforms. The plates, we get lots of earthquakes, but there isn't like new land formed. Uh, land isn't destroyed. So um, the best examples on the planet right now, and I think uh, we should know this, the best examples for, for us to remember of a transform boundary is the San Andreas fault where the Pacific plate is going in this direction. The, the North American plate is, is headed kind of in that direction, but not as fast. The Pacific plate is passing it. And because of that friction, we get lots of earthquakes in California. I'll show these on the map later. The best example of a mountain range is the Himalayas. where India is just plowing into Asia and buckling and pushing up. Uh, the Himalayas get taller every year because that process is still going on. The best example of an ocean trench, we'll go with the Marianas, which we watched yesterday, seven miles deep. Two ocean plates are getting pushed under and, and the one is being subducted in that deep ocean trench. Uh, deepest place on Earth, seven miles down. It's called the Challenger Deep. Um, best example of a, of a mid-ocean ridge is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. There's also ridges in the Pacific and the Indian Ocean, but the Mid-Atlantic is probably the clearest example. And... The best example of a rift valley right now is the Great African Rift.
And I think I've got examples for all of them. So you should know the examples too. And I'll just point those out. Here is where India is plowing into Asia. This This area right here is being crumpled and folded and pushed up as the Himalayas. This is where the Pacific Plate and the Philippine Plate are pushing under and making the Marianas Trench. This is the Great African Rift. It's not ripped apart yet, but it, it might. There, there may become a, a separate plate there. But you can see on a, on a map, you can see a you can actually see where the rift is. Um, this is the San Andreas Fault, where the Pacific Plate is headed in that direction and the North American Plate is headed slower in that direction. And of course, the, the Mid-Atlantic Rift, which includes Iceland. Iceland is an exception because it's a hot spot on the Mid-Atlantic Rift. But the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is one thing you should remember. Also, Yellowstone was a hot spot in the middle of a plate, and Hawaii was a hot spot in the middle of a plate. And I think that's everything. Uh, you're probably watching this because there's going to be a test within a couple of days. So, uh, good luck with that. On this test, you get to use a 4x6 note card. So, I would encourage you to uh, fill it up. Have a good day.